Hello everyone, welcome to the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel. My name is Dave Kay. This is our first video of 2022. I hope you had a good new year and you managed to socialise and keep safe at the same time. So this video will help you if you think or you suspect that you're losing pressure from your forks on your bike. Um, I'll hopefully be able to show you the reasons why uh, forks lose pressure, how to put it right and how to find out if they are losing pressure or not. So let's crack on. So this is a lovely transition patrol. Now the customer's brought it in because he's saying that his forks are actually losing air. Now he can take it out for a ride, uh, come back, leave it a couple of days and when he comes to ride it again he says the forks seem to have lost a load of pressure. Um, now he says the longer he leaves it, the more pressure they lose, which indicates to me that there's a slow leak in there somewhere. So nothing drastic has happened, but obviously something's worn in there. Now, to, to know how to fix this leak, you need to understand how these forks work. Now these are Fox Floats 34, okay? It's the, it's a, the principle of how these forks work is very, very similar across a broad range of suspension forks. But we'll concentrate on this uh, being a Fox 34. So let me show you how these forks work. So what we've got basically is here is, is there as forks. These are, these are a, a factory fork. We know the factory because they're actually Kashima coated. Fox 34s. So on the right hand side of the fork, which is your left, because uh, you're stuck in front, is the damping side of the fork. So this side of the fork controls all your high speed and your low speed damping and your compression. That's all controlled from this side of the fork. There is no air in this side of the fork at all, apart from obviously the ambient air or the standing air uh, that's inside the fork. The pressure side of the fork or the air side of the fork is in this side here, the left hand side or your right. Now this is, compared to this particular side of the fork, this side is fairly simple and there's not half as much technology in this side as there is in this side. But this is the side that we wanna concentrate on and this is the side that contains all the air. Forget this side for now. So what we've got basically is we've got an air chamber. Now, depending on which model or manufacturer of, of fork you've got would depend on how big this chamber is. But essentially the air chamber is at the top here. Okay. Now this particular piece here, this, this unscrewing top cap uh, exposes the air valve. Okay. Which is there. Now this particular air valve we use to actually pump air into the fork. It only goes in the left hand side and it fills this chamber up. And depending on how much pressure we put in there would depend on how forks, how, sorry, how hard your forks are. Now the idea uh, is that we put, just put enough pressure in here to allow for 25% of the sag. So when you sat on your bike still, uh, and you're not going anywhere with your feet off your ground, this particular o-ring should actually be round about there, which is 25%. And you achieve that by putting a certain amount of air in there. The lesser air that you put in there, obviously this higher ring is this, sorry, this, cracky, I can't even put my words together. The, the, the less amount of air that you put in this side, the higher this ring is gonna be. So the idea is to get enough in there so it sits around about 20%, 25% of the full travel. It is a guide, by the way. It just depends on how you want your, your forks to feel. So what's in this particular side of the fork? Well, I'll show you. Now this, I know we're looking at fox forks, but I don't have a, a, a fox fork air shaft in there. But this is a RockShox one. And the principle is the same. They're kind of reasonably identical. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just open this because it's a brand new one. I'll just seal it back up and it'll let me show you how this air shaft works. Okay, so 
if I put this up against the fork, I'll just drop my camera down. So I hope you can see that. So this is the air shaft, okay? Now this sits in the fork, actually quite low down, about there. Maybe a little bit lower. Now, depending <clears throat> on how long this air shaft is, dictates how much travel you've got in your forks. Now, you can buy different air shafts for these uh, to give you a, a less or a longer travel. So you'd have to have a look at your specifications to, of your fork to see if you can actually get one. What happens is this actually sits in the bottom of your, of your stanchion, of your lower legs, okay? And it drops right down at the bottom and a screw goes up through there and fastens it to the bottom of the leg down there. This actually sits in this particular chamber here, okay? So as you as your fork uh, or your lower legs slide up and down, this moves up and down in this chamber. Now, essentially, this 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 this, this air shaft is the only thing in this side of the chamber. Obviously, besides a few more O rings and things like that, and circlips, this is the only thing that sits in this left hand chamber. So, <clears throat> this particular portion is empty and all that's in here is air and you pump it in like I said before through this valve here so if we've if we've got a leak or if you've got a suspected leak in this air shaft side in this air side you've got either two issues where it potentially could be coming from this is this particular rubber seal here you can see on the top I hope you can see that anyway let me yeah I think you can so this particular rubber seal, it could be the culprit, okay, it could need replacing, or it could be the top here, where you put the air in. It could be the valve that's faulty, it could might need a new valve. It might have a leak around this top here, okay, which you can see. Um, so how can we find out then where this leak's coming from? So what I'll do is, let me take my camera around and I'll show you the first thing to check. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take the top cap off and we need to check to see how much air is actually in it at the moment. Now I've actually bounced these up and down and there don't feel to be any air in it at all. So let's take a uh, shock pump and we'll actually see if there's any air in it. This is the first thing that we need to do. Don't need to put much in if there isn't any in. Let's have a look. Right, so as I thought, there's, uh, well, there's nothing in there at all. See if you can see. There you go. If you can see that. There's nothing in there at all. So let's pump it up. Okay, so we've got just under, well, it's 100, 100 PSI in there at a minute, which will be enough to find out where the air is going. Now, if you look at the gauge, you can see it's actually not dropping. Well, not significantly anyway, uh, which suggests it's not, it's not been a, a, can, a catastrophic air failure. There's obviously a slow leak, which is what we suggested earlier on. So let's take the, the shock pump off without releasing too much air, okay? So what we've got now, we have uh, 100 PSI in this left hand, uh, uh, this chamber here. So, the, what, so the, the first thing that we need to do to check where this air might be coming from is we need to do one step at a time and eliminate certain things. What we want to do is we want to take some light oil, like 3-in-1 oil or chain lube. It'll be fine. And what we need to do, first of all, we don't use water. Don't put water in here because if there is a leak, then the potential it could actually go the other way into the chamber. Um, there's a slight risk of that, but uh, so we're best off using oil. So what we want to do is just drop some oil into the top of the valve, just so it fills up. Another drop, that's it. Okay. 
So what we're doing now is we're actually testing this valve to see if there's any leaks uh, from inside this valve. Uh, we can actually see that there's none at the moment, okay? That we, if there were, there'd be slightly tiny air bubbles um, just popping up through there, but I can't actually see anything obvious at the minute that's coming up there. If there were, then we'd certainly obviously replace this valve inside. So now what we need to do is, now that we've established that it's really not coming, it's not coming from there, we need to put some oil in the bottom of here to see if it's actually coming from the bottom. So we'll do that now and we'll drop some more oil in the bottom there. I'll drop the bike down a little bit further so it actually goes level. So the bike's down now on the floor uh, and the top of the fork is level and oil is starting to run round. Uh, if you look very, very carefully, you will see tiny, tiny air bubbles coming from the bottom uh, of the base of where the valve goes in the top uh, of the top cap. Um, you have to look extremely closely to see them, but you will just see them. And that basically has identified where as air is coming from. Now, it is very, very slow, uh, but the, nevertheless, it is leaking just there. So what we need to do is we need to take all the oil out of the center there so we can actually release the air before we take this top cap off. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I've cleaned all the oil out and we've let all the air out of that system by pressing that little valve at the top. And then what we need to do is now we need to unscrew this top cap. Now, generally speaking, it's always best to do this with a flat bottom socket, okay, like this one here. Um, if you use a standard socket straight out of a toolbox, then there's a slight chamfer on the top and they don't fit on these edges right. If you've not got one, then use a really nice set of uh, adjustable spanners with some really nice jaws on them, nice and clean and, and sharp. And then what we just basically do is just put these on there very, very carefully and just turn it until it starts to undo. Now you must remember to take the air out first, okay? So now that's unscrewing, I'll take it all the way out and then I'll come back. So the photograph that you can see on screen at the minute is a photograph looking down through the top of the air shaft side of the fork and they actually you can actually see the top of the air shaft um, there that, that's right at the bottom and it's this particular piece that I've got in my hand at the moment here. The bit you can see in the photograph is this particular bit here. Now, generally speaking, the little washer round here, it, it can fail and it can actually let the air through. But I think in this particular case, we've established that where, where the air is coming from, it's coming from the valve area at the top. Um, and we can see from the photograph, there's quite a lot of grease in the bottom of there. It's definitely not short of grease. And so I'd be tempted to kind of leave that alone. I don't think that's as trouble down there. So what we need to do is let's have a look at the top cap. Let's establish where this, where is this air coming from? Uh, we'll look at whether the valve might be loose, whether it needs a new seal or it needs a new valve core. Let's have a look at that in a minute. Let's put it on the bench. So here's a top cap uh, on the bench. It's got a green volume spacer on the bottom, which we'll just take off for now and put to one side. I'll explain what they are uh, if you don't already know another time. Okay, so this is his top cap, there's his valve, and we, if you notice, uh, we, we saw some tiny bubbles around the bottom of this particular uh, valve here. So we need to establish whether this valve's tight or not, or whether it's loose, or whether there's some muck underneath. So what we need to do is we need to get us uh, adjustable spanners on there just to hold it in one particular place. We'll get us... Uh, so a long socket on there and we'll just gradually undo oh that were quite loose that to be honest that wasn't particularly tight at all um, which is a concern because that could be where why the air is coming out so let's unscrew this okay 
that comes out of there and there's a little rubber o-ring on the bottom so I think what we should do is I think we should replace that rubber o-ring and we should refit it and obviously tighten it up to the right torque okay we'll give that a clean with some isopropyl alcohol or some kind of solvent just to kind of get that muck off that's it give it a wipe and a clean that's it inspect that bottom to make sure it's nice and clean we'll refit this new o-ring being careful not to damage it okay and then we'll refit that in there but I'll just give that a clean first we'll run a tiny little bit of oil on that rubber washer which will help seal it just run his fingers round that's it and we'll just screw it back in there that's it until it touches the bottom by hand and gets in that groove okay and then we can tighten it up okay so we need to torque this down to 4.52 newton meters okay so carefully hold your adjustable spanners the correct setting okay and we'll torque this down to 4.52 there we go so what we should see now is we should see a really good seal uh, between there it was loose uh, well it wasn't tight enough anyway that's for sure it definitely wasn't four and a half newton meters so what we need to do now is just double check this this o-ring here it looks to be in good condition there's no tears or rips or anything like that that we can see so we'll just put a tiny little bit of oil on that and we'll just run that round just to create a good seal put the uh, the volume spacer on and we'll drop that back into the top of his fork okay so we'll take his top cap drop it back onto there line it up don't cross thread it and just gently wind it in with your hands now this needs to be tightened up to 24 newton meters okay so we'll just torque that up and i'll come back okay so we're all torqued up let's put some air in it and we can test again for leaks we'll put 100 pound in it again and I'll come back in a minute okay so there's us 100 pound 100 psi so we'll just quickly take this valve off without losing any okay and then what we'll do is we'll drop some more oil in there and we'll retest and as you can see not one bubble okay so what we need to do now we need to keep this on test we know we've put a hundred pounds a hundred psi in that air shaft side so what we need to do now is we need to leave it at that 24 hours and we'll come back and see if we've still got a hundred psi in that left hand side if we have then that's as leaks sorted so we'll come back in a bit so we're back again uh, 24 hours earlier we put a new o-ring uh, on the top of this fork 
um, and now we need to double check to see if it's actually still got 100 psi in there if it has then jobs are good so let's have a look so we'll get this pump back on here and we'll double check to see what's actually in there oh 100 pounds brilliant jobs done so we now know for sure that that's where as they were coming from and we've got 100 pound in we had 100 pound in yesterday so we've solved this problem now if you suspect that your fork is leaking air slowly like this one was then that's the procedure that you need to follow to find out where it's coming from i wouldn't suggest that you strip it down any further than what we've done unless you feel competent about doing it uh, there is suspension specialists uh, that are out there that will actually do it for you if you don't if you don't feel confident about doing it yourself but that's fairly straightforward it's fairly simple just remember to release the air out of your top cap before you unscrew it and use either a decent um, adjustable spanner or a flat top socket for whatever size that you need so i hope you enjoyed that any questions please leave a comment and please subscribe thanks very much see you bye Oh, total pep.